Hello everyone, my name is Mehdi and this is Design by Mehdi. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add any stitches to your renderings. As you may know, I do use SolidWorks for 3D modeling and I use Keyshot for rendering most of the time. And it is a hassle to add stitches in SolidWorks. There are a few things you can do in SolidWorks if you want to do it in SolidWorks. One is that you just create a body, a solid body of just one thread, one part of the thread, and then you just use a pattern tool and you just copy paste it all around your area that you want the stitches to look. And now that's gonna add a lot of pressure on your computer because now you have hundreds of stitches. And this is how we were taught in school. Um, as you can see here, I have a rendering of a backpack I did uh, when I was what, this junior, sophomore, junior, I think. And as you can see, I have these stitches here. And guess how I made those stitches? I created one solid body and then I just copy pasted the whole thing in SolidWorks. So all these individual stitches that you see, they're all solid bodies. So as you may know, this is gonna put a lot of pressure on your computer and then it's gonna make it a lot harder and a lot slower to render when you take it into Keyshot. So, you know, I, I learned this method and I was like, okay, there should be a better method. So what I did, um, I actually tried a different method. So as you can see here, I have Exabag, which I will talk about it later. Uh, this is, I think this is the second design or the second general design. And here, uh, the quality is not very good, but the stitches, they're not actually solid bodies. In SolidWorks, I actually created a sketch and then I put that sketch onto the surface. So now I have, you know, hundreds of different surfaces, you know, different colored surfaces, because in SolidWorks, you can choose a feature and then you can change the color, the surface color of that feature, with like one click. So that's what I did. And then I took it into Keyshot, you know, it was much faster. Um, and, you know, I just applied a different material to those uh, different color surfaces and it gave me these results. Uh, it's pretty good. I, I mean, it worked much better than the first method. But then I was like, you know what? This is also too much. It's like, I don't, I don't, I want to spend as, you know, as uh, not as much time in SolidWorks. I just want to, you know, do rendering and Photoshop and stuff. So with the new design of Exobac, which again, I will be talking about it at the end of this video, I was like, you know, I wonder if I can just like do a simpler method and just like do it in Photoshop because I don't have time to add like all those things in SolidWorks. And as you can see, this is what I came up with. Now this is uh, just a, uh, I guess, uh, something to keep in mind. It will be ultimately easier to follow this method to do it in SolidWorks if you want to do like 10 or 20 different renderings than to choose the third method. But I didn't want to do that many renderings. I just wanted to do maybe five, six renderings um, because that's all I needed. So I just decided to try it in Photoshop. And as you can see, if you just like keep it zoomed out, these stitches, the like grayish white stitches, they actually look pretty good. But if you zoom in, if you like really zoom in, this actually looks decent. This doesn't look very uh, realistic, but honestly, no one's gonna zoom in that deep. So uh, let me show you how to do this. It's very fast, it's very quick, and it's very easy, much easier than if you were to do it in SolidWorks. Let's begin. All right, here I have a brand new rendering of Exoblack, the very latest edition. And it's I, the only things I've changed about it in like a previous um, Photoshop file, which I didn't say was just the lighting. Uh, I made it a little bit brighter, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Uh, as you can see, this is just a 16 by 9 widescreen rendering, so it's not very uh, high resolution, which is fine. This is how it's meant to be viewed. And I want to add stitches to here, here, to all the lining, basically. Here, 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 you know, all uh, a lot of different places. Here, here, here. And again, if you were just, if you were to just like do one rendering, 
and you want to do like add those uh, stitches in SolidWorks, that would have taken a while. So this is the method I will be showing you. Just go to your pen tool, click your pen tool, and you basically draw a line wherever your stitches you want them to be. Now you can all obviously also do this in uh, Solid by uh, Illustrator, and it might be easier in Illustrator because Illustrator is obviously a vector-based software, but I personally prefer Photoshop, um, so we're just doing it on Photoshop. And um, before you start, you want this to be on shape because there are different different ones, paths and pixels. You want it to be on shape. So when you did draw your line, you go to fill, you turn off the fill, and then you go to stroke. You, you know you choose your color, whatever color you want to be, uh, you want it to be. You can choose uh, from one of these um, default colors, or you can just choose a custom color. So we're just gonna do maybe this grayish color because I want it to be. Uh, a bit gray, I don't want it to be too white. And depending on how far your camera is and how zoomed out you are, you want to play with the stroke size. I realized, I found out that for this kind of rendering, this like kind of zoomed out rendering, 1.5 is good. And now we have like this line and you, now you want to turn it into stitches. So you can go to stroke options and the there are three default um, options. The first one is just a solid line. The second one is this, and this is the third one. I created this fourth one for other renderings with like uh, this view and this camera. So I'm just gonna do that, but I, I can show you how to change this. So when you click on this or on any of them, you can go to more options and uh, you, know, you don't have to worry about that as much, but you can change the size of the dash and the gap. So for example, if I do 10, you can see the dashed lines are actually much larger, but the gap is still one pixel. So let's go back and let's do our default, which is two and one. For more zoomed in um, uh, renderings, I realize that this this is better, which is I think four to yeah, it's four to. So this is a half of that. And when you have this, you know you add all those lines everywhere, like here and on top and everywhere. Uh, you go to you hold. Uh, lift click on your mouse and then you go to direct selection tool and then you start adjusting all these lines you know again it's not a big of a deal like i'm just being a bit picky here uh but yeah like like this is this is pretty good and let's say i have i don't know i have it like everywhere and this is actually a bit too light so let me just go a bit darker uh let's see let's see grayscale um let's do this maybe was that the same color i don't know but this is fine okay so you have a shape uh, which is a vector so you can't really change the color of it like like how you normally change color stuff in in uh, photoshop but you can do you can just um uh convert it to just like a picture like an image and the easiest thing I do, I just go to brush tool, I click on it, and then it says, hey, it must be rasterized. And then I just hit OK. And now it's rasterized, so, right? So you can just like uh, use it however you want. The next thing you do is that you go and you actually change the darkness and the lightness of um, this, this line here. So the way to do it, you go to this tool, burn tool. There is dodge tool, there's burn tool, and then there's sponge tool. So you go to burn tool and you keep it maybe on shadows. Okay. So it's a just reduced size. And then you just go over your line, you know, where there are shadows to make it look a bit natural. And I think that was, uh, oh, here too. And you see how that's darkening, uh, but you do want to erase that. Uh, so you do like make, make this look darker. Then you go to dodge tool. You go to highlights and you know you make it a bit lighter on the areas that get more light, like here. And the last thing that you want to do is you want to go to your eraser tool. There we go, too large. And you want to erase all those 
parts that you do not want. Well, that's actually not the last thing. The last, there, there's one more thing. And you know, you zoom out, you take a look at it. Oh, okay, it looks good. It looks decent, whatever. You go to filter. And again, it depends on how zoomed in or how zoomed out you are from the rendering. Uh, you go to blur and you do a Gaussian blur. Uh, for this like distance, I use I, I like to do half, um, half a pixel, so it makes it look a little bit more, like more fitting within the rendering uh, quality, and that also depends on the rendering quality as well. And that's that's honestly that's basically and this. As you can see, this is much, much, much easier than to do it in SolidWorks. So let me know what you think about this tutorial. Um, I think this is just how I'm going to do stitching from now on. And you know, that looks decent. You zoom in. Ah, OK, cool stitches, you know. Yo, bro. OK, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is actually ExoBath. So let's talk about it. OK, so this is ExoBraced. Um, this is what I've been working on for the past year or so, but the initial idea for ExoBack, uh, I actually started working on it about two years ago in, I think, August of 2021. So it's not been two years um, yet, but almost two years. And after, you know, more uh, three different generations of design, which you've seen on my website, on my Instagram, and even on some of my YouTube videos, and more than 50 or 60 different prototypes, I finally finalized the design of Exobag. And as you can see, this is Exobag for you. So what is Exobag? Exobag is a passive bag exoskeleton, which means it does not use any electronics or um, any batteries or anything. It's just completely mechanical and it uses elastic bands to help you lift with First of all, a better posture. And also these elastic bands, they will work as if you had an extra set of lower back muscles. So they basically do the thing for you. Now this product is not meant to replace your lower back muscles, but rather help them, assist them. So you don't put as much pressure on your lower back muscle. Obviously this, this, this device was designed for warehouse workers and uh, people who do, you know, manual work. Uh, but anyone really can use this. Maybe you, you have a project in the backyard, you know, you have to lift a bunch of lumber or something. Um, you know, you just buy this, you put it on, you use it for a few days, you know, you keep it in the closet. It's not very expensive. I cannot uh, tell you how, how much it costs yet, but we're finalizing the, the cost, it costs as much as a higher end back brace, basically, that you find on Amazon. And similar devices in the market, again, I'm not going to name them, they usually cost more than $1,000, like $1,300, $1,500, $1,700, even, even higher. And this is, this, this is three digits, you know, uh, 200 to 300 to 400, you know, around that, that, that much. Um, and I am uh, honored and I am pleased to tell you that we are actually launching the pre-order campaign on our own website this Friday, June 30th. So two days from now. And the reason we're doing it on our own website instead of like a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo or a crowdfunding platform is that we can cut down on costs for the end user. Because if we're on Kickstarter, you have to pay them like a 10% fee and then uh, um, an extra transaction fee Per transaction, basically, and we also have pay. We have to pay for marketing and advertising, and so we're doing all of that ourselves, and we're doing it on our website to cut down on costs for the end user. So anyone can really, you know, place an order, use these products, and uh, you know, for a very cheap. So coming this Friday, June thirtieth, Exobac. Um, if you guys want to check us out, we uh, do post regular updates on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and also YouTube. Some, sometimes I post videos on YouTube, uh, ExoBrace YouTube, but uh, usually I'm most active on Instagram, as you can see, and on LinkedIn as well. I'm not going to open LinkedIn because that's uh, admin view. Uh, <laughs> so that's that. And 
the timeline for this product is that we're gonna launch the product in June thirtieth. So it's gonna be open for at least sixty days. We might have to like extend it by a month or so. We'll see. And then while that's um, pre-order campaign duration is open, uh, you know, we start doing large scale beta testing or pilot testing, uh, you know, with larger companies. Uh, so while that's going on, you know, we do the testing and uh, we, we are on track to finalize everything and start mass production in November-ish time and start delivering the products that you place an order for the, for the pre-order campaign in December. So it takes a few months, um, but right now we do actually have connections with manufacturers, some in uh, you know, out of the country and some here uh, in the United States. But this is what I was gonna talk to you about. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to use one of the renderings for Exoback um, for this short tutorial. So if you if you want to check us, uh, go to www.exobreaks.com. You can uh, you know contact us if you want to, or you can message me directly. You can leave your email address here, um, and you know you can maybe read about what we do, what we're planning to do in the future, and the two products that we have right now. As of now, this is the product we're working on, and um, in two days or three days, uh, this will this page will change. Then you will see Exobag that is ready to be pre-ordered. And that's about it. I'm very excited. I've been busy working on this for a very long time. That's why I've been uh, not posting as many videos as I used to. But let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you can or if you want to participate in our uh, pilot testing, even beta testing. If there's anyone you know in, in Houston, Texas, let us know and you know, we'll figure it out together. Have a good day. I hope you enjoyed um, this video and me talking about Exobac. I'm very excited. Goodbye.